Okay, uh, let's get started. Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's Adams webinar titled ACSI Adams Code Simulation Interface Overview. My name is Yijin Fan, and I'm the product marketing manager for Adams and EZ5. Anthony Gugino, our product designer, will be the presenter for today's session. And during the Q&A session, uh, we will have uh, Jose Ortiz. He is the Adams development manager for uh, Adams Solver. He will be joining us for the Q&A session to answer your questions. In today's webinar, we will give an, um, an overview of the Adams and Mark code simulation capability that, were, that was introduced in Adams 2014. Um, and uh, followed by today's session, we will have a live demo as well as a Q&A session. So if you have any question regarding either Adams, Mark, or the, the content itself, please type your question down in the Q&A window. We will try to have them answered either during the session or following the event. Okay, uh, now I'm going to pass the presenter to Anthony. Thanks, Eugene. Okay, welcome everybody. Uh, here's the agenda I'll go through today. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about uh, at a high level what the uh, Adams Co Simulation interface is, what its benefits are, and then describe some application examples, a little more detail technically about uh, how it works, and then we'll discuss the use cases, some descriptions, uh, detailed descriptions of a few uh, example use cases, and then Following that, uh, Yijin will be doing a uh, brief demo, and then we'll end with the question and answer session, as Yijin mentioned earlier. So let's get started. Uh, what is this thing we call the Adams Co Simulation Interface? Uh, it's essentially a co simulation between Adams and Mark, and it's using a, a new tool we call the Adams Co Simulation Interface, which is a general uh, purpose Adams Co Simulation tool, a uh, foundation or platform, if you will. Uh, and it's, uh, for now, aimed only at uh, co-simulation between Adams and Mark, but it's, uh, we hope to be a foundation to do, uh, enable co-simulations with other codes um, in the future. For the Adams and Mark co-simulation, it allows co-simulation between one Adams model and um, one or more Mark models uh, at the same time. So you could have a tri-simulation, I guess you could call it, or a quad-simulation, something like that, where you've got multiple Mark models uh, running as uh, independent processes, all co-simulating with a single Adams model. Typical workflow for working with this tool is shown here. Uh, you'll start on the left side with preparing the models in both Adams and Mark and then uh, creating a configuration file that basically defines the interaction between those two models for the co-simulation tool. There's a small GUI that helps you set that up, and you'll see that in each demo. Then you'll run the co-simulation in which the Atom Solver sends uh, position data to Mark, uh, motion data to Mark, and then the Mark Solver is passing forces, uh, force response back to Atoms. You then do post-processing independently in Atoms, post-process the things that were modeled in Atoms in Atoms, post-process the things that were modeled in Mark in uh, your Mark post-processor like Mentat. And then uh, you could optionally do a co-animation at the end as well through a uh, plugin we've added in Atoms and capability already there for Mark uh, results with a tool called uh, CEI Insight. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in detail uh, as we move. So what are the benefits of doing it? Atoms and Mark co-simulation. Well, as an Atoms engineer, an MBD engineer would know that representing nonlinear flexible bodies is uh, really not possible in, uh, in in some ways within Atoms. Uh, certainly, you can use elements and some things like that. The new NCF uh, tool for some geometric nonlinear get uh, uh, you know to get a, a true nonlinear flexible body in your model in Atoms right now metric nonlinearities or material nonlinearities, uh, a tool like this can be very helpful and can increase your, of course, make your model more accurate if you're capturing the nonlinear effects of certain components in your multi-body dynamic system. This uh, approach is especially beneficial, I should say, when runtime interaction between uh, MBD and nonlinear FEA is required. So that means there's an interaction between these things during the simulation. You know, it's not a chained analysis kind of thing where you know you take some loads from atoms and then you know dump it to an FEA uh, preprocessor as load cases and then run a you know run a stress analysis or something like that and uh, 
analysis downstream. This is a case where really the answers aren't going to be correct unless there is runtime interaction between multibody dynamic system model, other pieces of the mechanism that are going on, say, and a nonlinear, mark nonlinear flexible body, uh, flexible structure in that model, that there's interplay between the two and that, there, you know, at each time step there's a, um, there's a relationship between the two and at each time step the, the responses from, from each side are influencing what happens next in, uh, in the other. So that can be a very, very difficult problem to solve without a capability like this today. Um, it's also especially beneficial when some of those types of problems are involving high deformation viscoelastic materials. This is an area where uh, you know, many of our MARC users uh, uh, use the MARC technology and where MARC is you know, a very trusted solution there. Um, also, MARC is very good with uh, being able to handle runtime remeshing of the flexible body. So if you've got cases where that's required, this is, again, a, a good approach here. The, uh, uh, you know, on the flip side of it, looking at it from the MARC engineer's uh, standpoint, from the FEA analyst standpoint, um, you have a similar problem, right? You want to be able to study, you know, the reverse problem, I should say. You want to be able to study how the component behaves with uh, realistic boundary conditions um, that come from a complicated multi-body dynamics model or can come from a complicated multi-body dynamics model. Some folks try to do complicated multi-body dynamics things within nonlinear FEA tools like MARC and that can be done but it can be very inefficient and we'll show an example of that uh, as we move on. So uh, you know, another big benefit here for MARC users is to save computational cost. Solve the things that make sense for MARC and the, what a MARC solver is set up to solve in MARC. Solve the things that uh, uh, you know, multi-body dynamic solvers should, should solve in atoms. So let's talk about a few application examples. Uh, you know, a number of things um, that involve seals are good application examples here. So complicated window or sunroof mechanisms driving seals and having interaction between those things. Um, this is for driving you know, windows or sunroofs or whatever it is that interact with the seal, I should say. Suspension component buckling in a high loading event. We'll show uh, some details of that. It's an example that you saw uh, scrolling by in the animation on the first uh, op opening slide here. So we'll, we'll go into that uh, in a use case example in more detail. Um, other kinds of uh, rubber uh, bushings or mounts or isolators that may be involved in, uh, in vehicles. For example, windshield wiper chatter is another interesting one. So we'll, we'll talk through a few uh, use cases in, in more detail at following what's next, which is the uh, technical description. So we'll get into a little more detail here. Uh, again, as I mentioned before, this is a general co-simulation product, Adams co-simulation product, Adams to X. Right now, X, it can only be Mark, uh, but again, we may uh, extend that to other things in the future. From a modeling standpoint, there are really no restrictions on what you're doing with the Mark's Mark model's content. Uh, you know, there's no element type restrictions or material restrictions. Any kind of Mark legal elements, materials, etc., can be used. Uh, the Mark bodies can have contact with other Mark bodies. They can have self-contact. Within atoms, there's really no restrictions either. You can have uh, uh, any of the atoms, forces, and constraints, and parts and bodies, and there, there any really atoms objects are allowable uh, here as well. Also, as I mentioned at the beginning, more than one Mark body can, um, per Adams model is possible. So the Adams model could be co-simulating with a single Mark model, which may have multiple bodies within it, or the single Adams model could be co-simulating with multiple Mark models that have you know, one or more bodies within them. The interaction method between the Mark and the Adams model uh, is right now defined as essentially um, a G-force. And essentially uh, an atoms marker, uh, the motion of a marker in atoms is driving a corresponding rigid surface in Mark. So you map that in the configuration file. We'll show some details of that later. But basically you identify a marker in the atoms model, which of course has to lie on some body in atoms. Uh, that corresponds to a rigid surface in Mark, and therefore the atoms marker's motion will then move the Mark rigid surface, and then whatever happens in, a, in terms of a force response in Mark is passed back through the atoms G force to atoms. Uh, this is just a diagram, kind of describing some of the things I was describing earlier in terms of supported topologies. You could have a, you know our atoms model here, the, the clear boxes. 
uh, and two different mark models interacting with two different parts of the Adams model. So you could have a mark, this blue mark model here and this black mark model over here. Um, you know, assume one of these things could be linked together in Adams. Um, what's not supported is an interaction between mark models. Certainly multiple bodies, again, within any one of these mark models, there could be multiple bodies in there, but having two different mark solver jobs going along and talking to each other, you know, presumably for some interaction between parts there, is not supported here. Nor are multiple Adams models involved in this co-stimulation. One Adams model, uh, one Adams solver job, multiple mark solver jobs. Independent mark solver jobs, really the point of that last slide. As I mentioned, there's the post-simulation interface GUI that sets up how you define these interactions. Um, and so that's, uh, EJ will show you that as he goes through and shows you how to set up these configuration files. But basically, you're uh, going to be defining which, uh, you know, what the GeForce IDs are that are expecting the information back from Mark, and then what the markers uh, in atoms are that correspond to which rigid surfaces in Mark. From a solving standpoint, these are uh, this supports both flavors of the atom solver. There's really no restrictions on the simulation settings, and it's a uh, transient dynamics analysis in atoms right now supported in 2014. Mark could be run either quasi-statically or uh, transient dynamics. And the co-stimulation algorithm itself is. Uh, custom for this solution. This was uh, developed and written specifically for Adams and Mark co-stimulations, uh, and it is a proprietary MSC algorithm. This is not an open standard like FMI or something like that that you may have seen us uh, using through the Adams Controls interface or anything like that. This is a uh, proprietary algorithm that does some clever, uh, does some clever tricks to allow the Adams and Mark solvers to proceed at their own time steps and sort of at their own rate and exchange data only when they need to. So uh, it's uh, very efficient in that regard. From a post-processing standpoint, uh, as I mentioned before, you're post-processing, you know, the Adams bodies, the things that have geometry are animating in Adams, in, in, in the Adams post-processor, there is no representation of Mark bodies within Adams View or Adams Post Processor. So you know, we'll see some examples of that as we move on. There's just a big hole in the Adams animation where the Mark body would actually be physically. Uh, but you can XY plot all the Adams model quantities. You can animate the rest of the Adams model in Adams. You can do stress and strain recovery on, on simply the Mark body. There's no representation within Mentat of the Adams bodies. Uh, so that's done, um, you know, so you're doing post-processing in the tools that were built to post-process, you know, mark results and Adams results. There is a combined post-processing, by the way, of co-animation. Uh, you've seen some examples of that already, and you'll see a few more as we go through the presentation here. Uh, so that's a new plugin in the Adams post-processor that allows you to export an Adams analysis of these results to uh, file types that uh, a tool called CEI Insight can consume. Uh, the Mark T16 file is natively supported by CEI Insight, and so you can combine these things and do these co-animations where you actually can animate all of the atoms and, uh, and Mark pieces together at once in, uh, in Insight. So that's a, a nice little tool and a nice uh, plugin uh, that we've added for it here in Adams. And you'll see some examples of uh, the moves you can make from that as we move along. In fact, here is one. Uh, this is a simple, very simple demo that Egent's going to run for us live today here in a few minutes. Uh, three block, uh, three blocks in atoms uh, connected with some springs, spring dampers in atoms in, uh, for two blocks, and then between the blue and the uh, the blue and the green there, we've got a very soft mark rubber block that is, you know, sort of glued to the bases of those, those items there and stretching out. Key feature benefits. Um, well, users don't need to write code to do a co-stimulation. There have been some folks that have presented things at user conferences over the years. Uh, typically with the help of our services staff here at MSC that have uh, written some code to actually uh, do these co kinds of co-simulations. Um, and so there's, there's not a need to do that kind of heavy uh, software development anymore. That's the purpose of putting this into a product, uh, one of the purposes. 
secondly, um, it's very easy to instrument these models. There's not a lot of extra additional setup or specific elements and things you need to add um, or subtract or add some mark models. You basically just need to identify those things we talked about, uh, registers and at mark and a, um, a marker and atoms. So who's going to communicate? Um, because it's TCP IP communication, we can support different servers and operating systems. So you could have your Adams job running on your laptop, uh, your Windows laptop, say, and you could have uh, your big beefy Linux workstation handling your, uh, uh, your Mark job, for example. Uh, it does support multi-threading. And uh, there's, uh, it does support you know, processes having different units, different global locations and orientations. Those are all things you can set up in the GUI and configuration file as well. So there's no, no need to be, uh, you're not restricted in those regards to having to uh, have the same units or same global origin for both models. Moving in the future, we will make some improvements, uh, efficiency improvements. So performance will improve for cases where the MARC model is relatively stiff compared to the Adams model. Um, we'll also be making some improvements uh, to support uh, quasi-statics and statics within the atoms and uh, using MARC nodes as interface items as opposed to solely rigid surfaces and other options items in MARC. Okay, use cases. So let's take a look. Uh, first, we'll go through the all-terrain vehicle use case here that uh, you saw in the opening slide. So it's a four-wheel drive ATV and it uh, is going to drive forward, turn, but then skid slide to sideways into an obstacle. And the left, front left lower control arm here is model is the nonlinear uh, FE model. And uh, we're trying to see if it's going to if it's going to deform plastically. It'd be a bad scene for the ATV manufacturer, so they would want to uh, you know, try to design around that or at least understand what kind of velocities are going to have that kind of uh, plastic deformation in. So the Adams model in this is almost the entire model. It's the you know, full vehicle model of the all-terrain except for that front left LCA, which is going to be modeled in MARC. In fact, you can see it's missing in this picture here because we didn't model it in atoms. It's modeled in MARC, so we can't see it in an atoms animation. Uh, and uh, all the other, all the parts of the atoms model, that is, are rigid bodies. We're moving at 12 kilometers per hour uh, when we start the turn and skid. And then they put some uh, low friction, you know, uh, low new uh, friction coefficients on the, between the road and the tire, so that's why it slides into this uh, very large curve stone. The MARC model, in this case, is the lower control arm and the attachment bushings. So it's the structural steel of the lower control arm uh, and then the bushings, the rubber of the bushings that seat into the four, uh, the four connection points of the vehicle. So then it's using a uh, using shell elements, um, an elastoplastic steel that has uh, this yield stress here, you see here, and this curve here, and uh, quasi-static nonlinear analysis with large strain capabilities was run in, in MARC. From a interaction uh, from an interaction standpoint, looking at this diagram here again, just sort of highlighting what I described in the MARC model that the both the bushings and the control arm itself are modeled in MARC. So, you know, the places where we connect to the bottom of this uh, damper strut, the, the knuckle, and the frame itself are all, uh, those, those bushings that would sit in there are all part of the lower mark. And so the motion here, the way we're transferring or interacting between these two things is such that then there's, uh, you know, essentially markers uh, on all these points on the vehicle that then tell, uh, that move down the road, basically, and tell the mark model to move its lower control arm down the road. So now we'll look at some results. So uh, you've got the Adams animation on the top, a mark animation on the bottom. Um, apologies, I think I started these a little bit out of sync, uh, but you get the idea. You could animate both of these results in Mark and in Adams. And uh, the lower control arm, um, basically, uh, the loads on it at these attachment points are high enough that it, uh, it does deform and has some plastic strains, the about 11% plastic strains in the areas of uh, the areas of collapse, which permanently deforms the LCA. So bad, <laughs> uh, bad outcome for the, uh, the owner of this ATV. And total simulation time here took about 15 minutes, I believe, on a you know fairly high power, high powered uh, Windows workstation. So uh, here's another animation showing uh, the attachment forces 
uh, basically that are in the uh, you know basically the reaction forces and the, uh, the, the forces that uh, occur at all four of the attachment points of the vehicle. So it's basically the loading on that part now. Of course, it's not much loading until we have this event here uh, just after the 0 .3, 0 0.3 second mark where loads go very high when we impact the curb stone. Uh, there's also co-animation in uh, N-Site, as I described before. So here's a nice picture of that again. This is uh, a similar similar animation that you saw on the opening slide. So you can see it bending into, you can see it impacting here in the uh, lower control arm, bending all in the same animation. So this is a very stable co-simulation, produces really smooth results for this uh, particular use case we found, and uh, it's very suitable then for studying the plasticity and buckling of components in, in you know, specific components within a full some kind of uh, high load event like this. The next use case comes to us from our friends at the Lightens Automotive Group. They modeled a torque modulator, so they have a crankshaft torque modulator, so this is a device that sits on the crank pulley of a front end accessory drive in a vehicle. So the crank pulley, of course, is what the, the engine is turning, and then there's this belt system here that passes that, uh, uh, you know, helps pass that torque to all the other uh, pulleys in here for various accessories, you know, air, compress uh, air conditioner you know, compressors and the water pump and all these other uh, accessories on the vehicle that's driven off the crankshaft. So their device is this torque modulator that the Lightens folks uh, manufacture, and they have essentially, its job is to essentially isolate some of the vibration that naturally comes from the you know, oscillatory nature of a crankshaft being driven by, uh, uh, by an engine. So those, uh, the, uh, this torque modulator has springs, these springs located in here, which are modeled in Mark, and then their contacts with the outer housings here, and then modeled in Mark, and then the center drive and the torque signal signature from the engine coming from atoms. And what the folks at Lightens found is that, you know, they've been doing this kind of this kind of analysis wholly in Mark, and when they switched to doing a co-simulation here, representing parts of the center drive um, and other parts of the system besides the springs, basically in atoms, that they found that they had a 15 15 uh, x uh, speed improvement in the overall simulation for themselves. So as I mentioned, they've been doing this in Mark only. So they said, you know, prove it to us that this stuff works. Uh, so, you know, we're happy with our Mark only results, uh, MSC. So show me that you can, uh, you know, show me what you can do with the Adams Mark Co simulation and we'll compare that with our Mark only results. And so these are, you know, some descriptions of the event in, uh, as it was modeled in, uh, in each sort of uh, configuration, a mark only configuration, and then the Adams Mark Co simulation configuration. So what we found here is the green curve is the input torque signature, which is the same in either case, and then the blue is showing the, uh, uh, the blue is showing the maximum of you know, the angular displacement of the drive uh, from the mark only model and the red from the uh, Adams uh, Mark Co simulation model, and showing those matching uh, matching pretty well here. And we're also seeing good correlation with the spring forces, uh, the, the load in the spring. This is on the left side shown here, mark in blue and atoms, mark cosim in red. And then again, here's the animation of the uh, uh, bodies in mark, and here's the animation of the center drive with the springs in mark, and now the center drive with the atoms. So what they observed here is that uh, they mentioned at the beginning, drastic simulation time improvement, about 15 times faster than the mark only solution. The result difference that they're seeing, 10 to 15 percent, depending on the output channel and uh, uh, and then how you look at it and how you measure it, is, is, is very well within their acceptable limits, um, especially given the, uh, the 15 times speed up that they're getting. And uh, one thing we noticed in there is the spring forces uh, in the uh, co-stimulation are initially zero because there's no preload step that was done there like it was done in the mark. So there's a little bit of an offset to begin with. It catches up after the first few seconds, you may have noticed. First few steps, I should say. Um, and so we'd like to uh, give a special thanks to uh, Steve at Lightens for, uh, for his help and his CAE team's contribution for this project. So we're very happy uh, to have their help and very happy that uh, he's satisfied with, uh, with the result that they're seeing with the, the co-simulation and the uh, performance improvement they're seeing. Okay, finally, uh, here's a simulation of a full vehicle with a battery housing that uh, uh, hits an obstacle as it's driving along. So I'll sort of on the uh, underside of the vehicle here. 
So the full vehicle model is an Adam's car. He drives a straight line, maintaining constant velocity. And then this battery housing blue part here essentially nicks this obstacle here. And the objective here, again, is to study the behavior of the vehicle when this happens and the plastic deformation and the extent of damage that occurs on the uh, battery housing. So it's an Adams car model in Adams. Everything in Adams car model is rigid bodies. Of course, there's you know uh, compliant connections and bushings and uh, and uh, enforced elements connecting those rigid bodies. Uh, it goes 30 kilometers per hour and uh, using a smart driver to maintain that velocity and drives forward until uh, drives forward and then the battery housing uh, impacts the obstacle. The Mark model is the uh, battery housing and the obstacle itself. There are some graphics in the Adams model to represent where those things really are, but uh, the, the actual model is here in Mark. And uh, the it is modeling, of course, the contact between this rigid ball here and then this uh, finite element, um, uh, nonlinear finite element representation of the battery housing uh, using the uh, material model that's uh, listed here, using shell elements here, and uh, a rigid surface that's just really one connection point that basically fixes the battery housing to the, to the vehicle undercarriage of the car and drags it along with it as it, uh, as it drives. Uh, and so again, you can see a number of elements and some other specs on the FDA model listed here that was uh, modeled in Mentad. So the interaction point here, again, what I just described on the previous slide, basically, highlighted here that you know, a G-force that is taking the force, uh, force response from Mark, passing it into Adams, Adams is passing, uh, uh, Adams is passing motion data into Mark. So this was a very quick analysis in terms of uh, the, the physical event time, uh, uh, 75 milliseconds here at 70, 750 steps. And uh, using, uh, you, know, you can see the Adams integrator set, uh, settings used here using the SI2, uh, SI2 integrator. And what's important to note here is that we ran both static and dynamic analyses in MARC. So the, tried this two ways, tried it with the static analysis of MARC and then tried the dynamic analysis. Mark. Sometimes you you know a user may want to do that. You may want to try to figure out, particularly if you're going to be running many iterations of the same event, you can figure out do you really need a dynamic analysis in Mark or not? You know, are the inertial uh, uh, you know are the inertial effects influencing significantly influencing the key results that you're looking at? So the results of this show, uh, you know, basically this is a pretty quick simulation, particularly the static analysis. I think this less than three minutes is what we're using uh, Mark statically quasi-statically, I suppose we should say, uh, and showing that, uh, again, when the vehicle hits the obstacle, we get local deformation with about 11, 16 percent uh, plastic strains. And so what we're seeing here is uh, the animation and the plot. And the plot here is showing the difference between, again, the static thing, if you run statically in uh, mark or the plot statically in mark or dynamically. So you can see, obviously, there's more. Uh, you know, a more active response if you uh, do a dynamic uh, simulation in Mark, but you know, it remains to be seen whether or not that's important enough to take the performance in. And here is the co-animation uh, driven in en driven by Insight, as I mentioned earlier, that like we can do showing the, the vehicle impacting the uh, obstacle and the battery housing here showing uh, plastic strain and next von Mises stress shown here. <coughs> Okay. Well, with that, I'll turn it over to Ejin to uh, wrap up with a live demo and then followed by uh, Q&A. Okay. Thank you, Anthony, for your uh, very informative presentation. Okay. Now, let's, um, let me quickly share my screen. So now, now let's go through a um, simple live demo to uh, to get just a little bit deeper dive into this uh, co-simulation, to the to the process of this uh, co-simulation. Um, the problem we see here is um, it's just um, a very sim uh, sim uh, simple model with a uh, a few blocks uh, modeled in atoms connected by the springs, and uh, there's a elastic block which is a sandwich between the uh, the blue box and the green box that is um, modeled in mark using 1000 brick elements 
So uh, in summary, three rigid blocks and one um, nonlinear flexible block. We will uh, today we will follow um, the flow chart that you can see on the screen here. Um, so I have a, uh, we have questions from the audience saying uh, if I have Mark and I, I have Adams, is there any other software that I need to uh, run the code simulation? So if you already have Adams and Mark, um, what you only need is the ACSI interface. It's a code simulation interface. It is an um, if you are running on a token system, you can um, basically uh, use this plugin uh, based on the token system. Or you can, there's an, one extra license for this code simulation interface. Uh, so, it's, uh, so besides Adams and Mark, you don't need any other software to, to run the code simulation. Um, and if you need to see the co-animation of your results, which is not necess necessary, but if you want to do that, you can use a software um, called the CEI Insight uh, to run the co-animation. Um, here we have a, we will go through the first four steps here, and uh, we will show you how you can export the necessary um, case files and um, also prepare for the Mark T16 files that. Uh, needed to uh, for you to create your co-animation. Okay, first is the um, model prepare, um, preparation. So basically, you need someone who knows how to use atoms, and you need someone who knows how to use Mark to prepare uh, the model from both um, from the two sides of the simulation. With this um, block uh, model as an example, we have this uh, three block system uh, that's simulated in atoms that we so we created this model using atoms and um, in between those two blocks we have uh, two G forces which is defined at the interaction points the interaction point uh, is uh, used uh, for us to communicate um, the force and uh, displacement between the Adams model and the Mark model. So you need to define the interaction points in the uh, in your Adams model as well as the Mark model. In the Adams model, usually uh, we use the g-force to represent that. This is the um, and this is the uh, the Mark Mentat interface. Um, so basically, we created a block with a thousand brick elements. And um, as you can see here, there are two rigid surfaces on the uh, on the two surfaces that the uh, flexible block contact the the rest of the system. So those two rigid surfaces are defined also at the interaction at the interaction points uh, between Mark and Adams. So that's what you need to um, do for your uh, individual models. After you have created those models, uh, you will need to create a, what we call the configuration file. We have an uh, we have developed an ACSI interface, which is what we call the Adams Co Simulation interface, uh, as Anthony has introduced before. So this is the interface um, that we created to make it easy for easier for you to create the configuration file with. Using this interface, you can either create a new configura configuration file or in, uh, modify an, an existing one. And uh, in the configura configuration file, um, you will need to define some of the um, things like uh, how the how those two models interact. Um, as well as the addi additional settings like the unit unit conversion factors, um, as you see here, um, the unit conversion factors you can define it here, um, and also the relative uh, location of the global reference frames, um, like uh, listed here, and also IP addresses which enables you to basically run atoms from one machine and uh, mark from another machine from uh, maybe another country. Um, 
So those are the things, some of the things that you can define. And also, the most important thing is to define the interaction, interaction between the Mark and Adams models. Um, so in this table, uh, you can, what you can do is to, you can add interaction. And um, here you can use the, the g-forces that you define in the Adams model, and you can, um, uh, you can use, you can leverage uh, the rigid surface that you created in the Mark model, and then connect those two elements together to create this kind of interaction between the two models. You can create, you can delete, you can uh, do everything and uh, generate this uh, configuration configuration file. So now we are done uh, with the second step. After you have the configuration file, um, through some uh, small settings like uh, connecting the um, connecting the the working directory with uh, some of the installation directory for Adams and Mark. Uh, you can start running the you can start running the code simulation. There are three B8 so this is the working directory as you can see here. There are three BAT files uh, that um, that's included in this folder. Uh, one is called the glue the wrong glue BAT. What it defines is that it uh, activates the the configuration file, and the wrong Adams BAT uh, will basically activate the Atom solver and the wrong mark base he activates the mark solver. Okay. Um, so to begin to start this simulation, uh, what you want to do is to add, uh, open the Adams command prompt. Okay, so first we we copy this um, directory and then we point Um, we point uh, the prompt, the command prompt to this directory, and then start the glue code first. So wrong glue. Okay. Um, if it's uh, successful, you can see messages like that. Start Adams, uh, the Adams process. So now you will need to start um, the Adams process. By running the uh, wrong Adams BAT. Okay, if it's successful, you will see the handshaking signal received from the glue code. And next, you will need to start the uh, the mark process. So you will need to activate the mark solver. Same thing, uh, you need to go to the working directory and um, open this uh, wrong mark BAT. So if, if everything is going well, you will, by um, opening this wrong mark.bat file, you will, you will start the code simulation process. So once the code simulation process is started, uh, as you can see right now, um, both Atom solver and Mark solver are running um, at the same time. They're communicating information. Um, the Mark is um, calculating the force and um, giving the force to the Atoms. Um, model while Adams calculates the displacement and give it back to Mark. Um, this particular um, simulation or analysis takes about four, uh, five to six minutes, uh, and uh, we are not going to wait until it, uh, it's done uh, to save some time, basically. And uh, so, uh, at this point, we we can I have saved uh, the analysis results in another folder that we can just uh, take a look. So after, uh, supposedly after we're done with um, the third step, we can go to the Adams post processor um, and also the Mark Man tab to see the results, for example, in Adams. Um, you will be able to get all the, 
uh, the results, uh, the typical results like the position, velocity, acceleration, um, and also the things like the forces and torques of your atoms model, atom system. And in March for your nonlinear uh, part, FE, FE part, um, you will be able to get things like the stress and strain results and also uh, the plastic stress and strain um, analysis um, curves. Okay. Now we are in the atoms environment. Let's uh, just um, open the results file. Go to the post processor. Let's load the animation on the left hand side and um, load a curve result on the right hand side. Here's the, the animation with the Adams model only. Um, so if you want to um, get the co animation from CI Insight, uh, you can export the case file using what we call the export co animation. Through this interface, you, you, can, you can basically uh, use the existing analysis results and uh, export a a uh, series of file format that can be readable by the CI Insight. And in the Mark uh, Men tab, um, for the Mark, uh, Mark T16 result file, you can just double click to open that. My computer is uh, running multiple softwares at the same time, so it's a bit slow. Um, okay, so this is the uh, the Mark model with uh, analysis results. So you, you can go to the results model plot and then choose. For example, I would choose to have the Stress analysis results shown on the table. And okay. And of course, you can, you will be able to get the stress history of any node on this uh, mark. Uh, particular mark part. So that's basically how you view the results in Adams uh, and in the Markman tab. And um, after you are done with this step, if you want to continue with the code animation, um, you would need uh, the case file along with some other files like the geo files that you can generate using the um, uh, co-animation output that we showed you earlier in Atoms, as well as the T16 mark file. With those files, you will be able to generate the co-animation, um, as you can see here on the screen. This is, uh, this anim co animation is generated using CI Insight. Okay, that uh, that will be the end of the live demo, and uh, I think we can move on to the Q and A session.